Well, good morning and welcome. Thanks for joining us on this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We're glad you joined us today on YouTube. If this is your first time joining us, a special welcome to you. At this time, we're continuing with no public attendance at our liturgies. Masses are live streamed every day at 8 a.m. and you can watch it at your convenience. Today, Holy Communion is available from 10 to 11 a.m. If you do intend to come here to receive communion, please remember to wear a mask that covers both your nose and your mouth, use the hand sanitizer provided when you enter, and maintain the required six-foot physical distancing. The link to today's worship aid can be found in the description box below. Our opening song, Give Us Your Peace, is really a prayer, and hopefully you'll join us in singing this at home. your peace oh God give us your peace your peace give us your peace oh God give us your peace your peace when we're afraid Running from truth, gather us back to you. Take every fear and fill our hearts. Give us your peace, oh God. Give us your peace, oh God. Give us your peace. your peace, oh God, give us your peace, your peace. When we are tired, weary and worn, take us into your arms, where there is no your peace oh God give us your peace your peace give us your peace oh God give us your peace your peace Lord we In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we do gather to pray together, it is the reality that it, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. It is he that reveals to us the goodness of his kingdom if we come before him humbly and with open hearts. Sometimes, perhaps, we're vain. Sometimes, we are arrogant and we do not come in humility. And if that is true, 
we pause and ask for mercy and pardon. Lord Jesus, you are the way and the truth and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, you are meek and humble. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, it is you that invites us to take your yoke upon us, and our burdens will be lightened and we will find rest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fall on a, of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. your 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. If you and I were asked to describe someone that we consider as humble, what words? might we use? How would we describe someone who seems to be gentle, yet strong, aware, but quiet, loving, but non-judgmental? How would we describe someone who is humble? Would we describe our Lord as someone who is humble? He who is the Son of God, the Son of Mary, he who is the Prince of Peace, he who is Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, all those magnificent, omnipotent titles belong to him. But he teaches us that he is humble. From the ancient prophet Zechariah, we have a prefigurement of the Christ who will come to save us. Because we're told to behold our Savior who comes riding on a donkey, who comes in humility, whose kingdom will be as vast from sea to sea He comes in humility with power, but not as the world expects it. This one who comes in humility, this who won from the beginning of his very life had no place to lay his head. He comes, the Son of God, the Son of Mary, as a humble helpless child. He tells us in this gospel from St. Matthew that we are to come to him when we are heavily burdened. Another translation of that particular line says, come to me when you're exhausted and when you're weary. We all know that experience for whatever reason. Throughout our lives, there are times when we are exhausted, we're weary, we're tired. And he says to us, come to me and learn from me, for I'm meek and gentle and humble of heart. For your souls will find rest in me. 
Resting in the Lord does not mean that we're inactive. Resting in the Lord, learning from he who is humble and meek and gentle, he's the source of our renewed strength. He's the resource of our peace of mind. He is the source that refreshes us. Come to me and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. It's an interesting image. If we stop and think about it, the yoke was not meant to be a burden to the oxen. The yoke was well-fitted, well-crafted, well-made, so that the wood would not chafe and harm the skin of the oxen. And the yoke was put on the oxen to help keep the ox focus as it plowed the field and went down the proper way and the proper row. It kept the oxen focused. And the yoke of our Lord can do that for you and me. For by our human nature and our sometimes living according to the flesh, as we read in St. Paul's letter to the church at Rome, we can go astray and lose focus of who we are, who we're called to be, and what we are asked to do. The gospel, which our Lord gives us and teaches us, for he is the gospel, he is the way and the truth and the life, the gospel resides in our hearts, not in our heads. And if we're to follow this gospel, the one who will undergo all kinds of public humiliation, he who will be spat upon, he who will be mocked, he who will not raise his voice against those who are harming him, he who will submit to the death of a common criminal, he who will tell someone being crucified with him on that hill outside of the city of Jerusalem, today you will be with me in paradise. And Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is humility at its greatest. How humble are you and I? The truths are revealed to the little ones, St. Matthew tells us, not those who are necessarily the smartest, the wisest, the richest, because sometimes our arrogance, our believing that we need no guidance, that we need no yoke to keep us focused, we sometimes are that way rather than realizing the truths of the kingdom are revealed to the little ones, you and me. It is in our Lord that we find rest. It is in him that we find our strength. It is him that we find the words of hope and forgiveness and healing, recognition and reconciliation that all of us need. We need to have them offered to us and we need to offer them to others along the pilgrimage. I wonder how we would describe someone who is humble. Would our Lord be our first example? With humility, we now renew our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born to the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We come before our God who teaches us humility, and because we trust in God's mercy and care, we know that these prayers will be accepted. Let us pray for the people of God, the Church, for the holiness and humility of all who are called to leadership in the Church, and for all who come to this place, the Casa, whether to pray in person or to join us via technology, seeking respite from life's tribulations. May every Christian heed the call to take up the yoke of Christ and follow him in speaking the truth lovingly, offering forgiveness generously, and praying for those who wish us harm. And for church communities everywhere, as they deal with the realities of life in the midst of this pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray too for our nation and our world. For our nation this holiday weekend, may God guide us in the values which we proclaim so that all may experience life, liberty, and justice for diplomats throughout the world as they urge for peace and work toward unity among all peoples. For those who have suffered abuse, whether at the hands of an authority figure or a family member, may our tender Lord bind up their wounds. In gratitude for doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers, who are making valiant efforts to do good in this time of great challenge. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us remember others who would benefit from our prayers. For those suffering in the extreme heat, for those without shelter, and without resources to protect themselves during this time of increased health risk and hardship, for all who need healing, particularly those with COVID-19. For all who are suffering the economic and emotional impacts of events out of their control. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for our own community. For our CASA community, may we actively work together to lift up the most vulnerable in our midst and to be brave and diligent as we confront and bring an end to all forms of racism, oppression, and prejudice. For all who have died this week and for all who mourn the loss of someone dear to them, we pray. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come before you in humility and in faith, and we ask that you receive the prayers that have been voiced, those that we hold in the silence of our hearts, and we place them before you in the name of your risen and ascended Son, he who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. We want to thank you for your continued financial and spiritual support for all of the ministries here at the Franciscan Renewal Center. Many people are contributing through the mail and online. And under the description box, there is a way to make a contribution online. We are most grateful to you for what you can do to help us to help you.
Let us pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his church, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, fathers of mercies and faithful Lord. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. With all the angels and the saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, 
whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may con that we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and who are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth, to freedom, to peace, and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is completed that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and to live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And I pray that the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. And even though we may not be able to be physically together at this point, we are never separated from each other. We're bound closely together by the gift of our faith and the gift of Christ who teaches us honest humility. If we are with someone, this is now an appropriate time to offer a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank all of you for joining us through the wonderful world of media. We continue to pray for one another that we will continue to be healthy and safe in every way. And I pray that the Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us bow down our heads now and pray for God's blessing. Bestow heavenly grace on your faithful, O Lord. May they praise you with their lips, with their souls, with their lives. And since it is by your gift that we exist, may our whole lives be yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. God. shall see then the speechless sing song